The question is, is it time to see you later, Data? Is it going to get there? Is it going to get there? That would have been impressive if that had gone in. Data, I just said a hybrid has a little bit of a chip and run. No matter what it says on a uh, GC quad, ain't going to be no difference when I'm playing that type of shot. Question is, have we got data obsessed? I think we just might have. I could be in the gorse. Sit down, ball. Sit down, ball. I think it's just sat down. But the point is, there are always two sides to every story, and I think data obsessed is one thing, and using data to your benefit as a golfer is quite another. And in today's video, in the Sunday night video, we're going to look at the pros and cons of data to an average golfer. Now, yet we pulled up short of the gorse a couple of yards further and we were knackered and dry ball data would have nothing to do or say about that because the reality is when I tested this club out, it said everything was fantastic. I tested out in dry ball conditions in a driving range where everything was, it's easy. There was no gorse. I could swing as free as I wanted and the data that I collected was perfect. Spin number was fantastic, carry number was consistent, launch conditions were consistent. There was no wind affecting those launch conditions. So it's very much something that we have to consider. And it's why I do all my testing out here on the course. I call it reality testing because to me, if you don't test these products out on the course when you're doing a review, the dry ball data stuff can be irrelevant. And just like now, there's no gorse in the driving range. That's a decent ball and maybe that dry ball data was right. This is a good club. Pulled it down the left. Sit down ball. Ah, pin eye, but I've ever pulled down the left. Right, the first question I want to ask is how many of you have been for a custom fit? You've seen all your numbers, they look superb. Dry ball data is ticking every box. These are the irons, this is the driver for you. You take them home, you play your first two rounds, and what on earth has just gone wrong? You're in panic stations, you've just wasted all your money because whatever you were doing in that driving range, it just isn't happening out on the course with these new clubs where dry ball data said everything was perfect. So I know what you're thinking, and you're pointing out a lot of things, but you're giving us no answers. Well, it's not about me giving you answers, it's about me posing questions and comments down below, because at the end of the day, this is all about what you do, what we do as golfers, the general public, as average golfers, and how we respond and react to stuff. Now, for me, I think it's important to get a balance on perspective with all things that you do, and dry ball data is no different. But we're obsessed with it. It's literally thrown down our faces, in, and I'm part of that. I do club reviews, and I will relay dry ball data. You even watch the majority of reviews that are done are done by professionals with club head speeds, with skill sets far different than yours, and you watch their numbers, and their numbers are irrelevant. They will be nothing like the numbers that you can produce. So that again baffles me as to why anybody would say, maybe we don't, maybe everyone doesn't get guided by it, but certainly that bit to watch a professional relay his data, that means nothing to me whatsoever, because I just can't do those things that they're doing. That's an odd one, and one I can't get my head round, but we're data obsessed, and it's thrown at us from all angles. Everybody talks about it. Opinions, give me some comments down below. In terms of YouTube videos and the content that you see, are you guided by what you see from the review, from the, the opinion of the review in an overall broad perspective, or do you get drilled down into some data? Now, as I said, it's all about perspective, and I've, I think what we've done so far is highlight the possible negatives in terms of dry ball data. But there is very much a flip side of that coin, as there normally is. And what you've got to consider is this. Let's go back to the custom fit element. If you go in for your custom fit and you take your existing set of irons, you need some yardstick to measure against the new set of irons you're potentially looking to buy. Now, without dry ball data, it is impossible for you to see those gains that you're possibly making. And those gains could be about control, they could be about ball speeds, they could be about launch angle, they could be identifying all the things that you potentially have issues with, with your existing setup, 
It's going to be dry ball data that identifies those issues and the club fitter will recognise that data and he'll recommend clubs, setups that will negate those issues that you have, resolve those problems. So without that data, where is the club fitter? He's absolutely nowhere. He can't do anything in terms of advising you. He can do a visual check, yes, and there are amendments that can be made, but you need to see some real drill down on data as a club fitter to be able to make sure you're giving the best possible advice to the golfer. So for me, dry ball data in that case is ultra important. Now, next thing to consider when we talk about dry ball data and the importance going back to YouTube videos that use dry ball data. And this is very much a positive. As we see every year, club manufacturers make bolder claims in terms of what their new product is going to do in terms of performance. And whether that's about control, about yardage, about ball speeds, about club head speed. But we know it's big, we know it's bold. And the only way to measure that is for YouTubers, testers, media, however it is, is to use dry ball data as a measuring stick. And that way, we can literally look at the claims that the manufacturers make and we can measure them. And we can measure them against previous year's products and we can either prove or disprove those theories. So just think, without dry ball data, I think the claims would get a lot bigger, a lot bolder, and we'd be suggesting we're going to be driving the ball 40 yards longer with the new club, unless you had those tests taking place, unless you had that accountability of dry ball data. So that's a very big positive from my side. So like I said at the start of this video, there is two sides to every story, and I think it's important to remember exactly those things. Don't, as a golfer, get data obsessed, is my opinion. Realise that when you're testing out your new golf clubs, or whatever reason it is that you've applied data to your game, Realise it's only a small part of what goes on, and it's not reality. It's different when you get out on the fairways. It's different when trees, gorse, water starts to come into play. Data means nothing in those situations. But we certainly need it, and club fitters certainly need it, in terms of being able to guide you and advise you into any changes that you may look to make. So I think it's something we've got to have. But don't get data obsessed. But that's just my opinion. And the important thing is, and like I said, with this Sunday evening debate, is what is your opinion? Are we data obsessed? And is it time to see your later data?